I think I think you've made your point. I'm coming. Because okay. I, I just want to take you. May you may redirect me if yes. you think. Y yes, I'll, yes. I think you were going to talk about the salary issues. Yes. Uh, you, the, the, the salary issue. The salary issue. Yes. Um, we, because the salary, the idea of the whole salary issue, how do we cut cost? Yes. Now, yes. still retaining the same level force in order to avoid the social distress that may, okay, that may, be, that may come about as a result of that uh, excessive retrenchment. Orosonia report is already there. Also, we are merging uh, enterprise. The National Assembly, they are talk, we are talking about laws, about, because it's most, of these, uh, most of these MDAs were set up by law. Of course, we understand. We are talking of the rule of law. We are talking of you know how we increase the rule of law and so on and respect for the law. The president and the National Assembly and all other stakeholders should come in a war room and then for once say and recognize that our countries are at the crossroad. You have seen the collapse of economies in Europe. It's as a result of a number of factors, mainly that at some point in the history of these economies, they felt that everything is free. And people were spending money, spending money, borrowing money, and borrowing money. Of course, I've said this. Now, to this issue of job, I also recommend, I also say that among many other things we need to do in order to save money is that look at the, for once, how can we create a salary regime where whether you are working in Security and Exchange Commission, you are working in CAC, you are working in Central Bank, you are teaching, you are in MAMS or whatever, you are any level one is level one anywhere. Level two is level two. two. Level 13 is level 13. Across what you say, across the civil service? Both the MDAs, yes. ministries, parasitic agencies, agencies of government, everything. Now, you can compensate people sectorially based on the hazards of his job. Of course, as a teacher, you re of course, it's, it's, it's tragic. It's an unmitigated tragedy. So what you're trying to say, in essence, is that there should be a cut in salaries. No, no you, don't, no, you may not cut. You don't cut the salary. No, what I'm saying is you may like take it to the, you may you, you may scale thing. it to the highest level of the present salary scale. Do you understand? Well, it should be across board. Across board. The level one officer in ministry it's of level finance one. is level yes. one. Yes, but you pay the medical doctor call duty allowance to compensate for the you know for the specific hazard of his uh, industry. By doing so. You would have, you know, brought uh, together all the money that would have been going off the that is the the, the overhead cost in all these agencies and MDAs that you have solved. Now the measures you have done, you have raised a lot of money, plenty of money. The fueling a day, the fueling we the money we use to fuel our MDAs a day. These SUV cars, the maintenance cost of these SUV cars. If you have one, you will know that those cars are not made for the for, for the uh, before that when the military were in government. If you are chief. If you are whatever, but you, you accept a letter to serve at any level of public service, this is the capacity of car you will drive. If you do don't want, go back to your house. Okay. I, th I, think, I, th I think you've made your point to a certain extent. You, you want to respond to some of the things. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, uh, well, oh. I, I'll probably pick up the, his concern about uh, you know, equalizing salary across MBA. A teacher 40 well, years, 25 years ago, my cousin was teaching as a teacher. No, 25 years later, his salary is less than 40,000. Mm. Okay, okay. It's sad, you know. Yeah. But is the same OE money we are using to pay the salary? Exactly. Is there yeah. another way we draw so money? Essentially from? speaking, uh, well, it, it, it makes uh, sense, uh, especially when you look at those who are actually suffering from, from that kind of scenario. Uh, the only problem is that the, some of the specific agencies he mentioned, like he said, of course, we have to also recognize the occupational hazards. Oh, sure. Uh, as, uh, as I speak today, well, I don't. Uh, the, 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 the salary structure of many of the MBAs is opaque. Therefore, you cannot actually say this is what makes up, this is your basic salary and all those kinds of things. A teacher is in what, Abuja, his rent what? allowance is 40,000. Somebody is sending 2 million naira rent. Yeah, okay. Do we yeah, have to assist yes, in Abuja? It's all part of the problem. Mm. But what, what I'm saying is that, um, like, for example, if you were working in a CBN or a SEC or any of those kind of places, uh, or maybe let's say FRS, yes. in Inland Revenue Service, you know that you go out there, you're supposed to get the taxes from people. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't earn well enough, then that's what, that's what they call regulatory capture. They're going to capture you. So how much you earn? If you earn that 40,000 that the teacher is earning, then they can as well say, look, take 200,000 and forget about the taxes. So that's the reason why they have to give some special preferences to some of those agencies, especially those who collect money. Uh, for example, the customs. I reckon that the customs as well, 
uh, their remunerations will be a little bit higher than some of the rest. Because they, if you look at where the Nigerian money comes from, you know, uh, they, they, a large portion comes from the customs. Or maybe the guys in the oil sector, NMPC, I know they earn some crazy amount of money in that place, you know. Of course, the truth is that, uh, unfortunately, as he has said, it doesn't, it doesn't even stop some of the corruption, even. That you may find a scenario where they earn that kind of money, and then what it does is that it, 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 it makes them even want more. You know? uh, however, it, perhaps it's something that is worthy of consideration. But one of the other things he mentioned uh, um, reminded me of the story of how the United States of America was able to overcome the Great Depression. In 19, uh, the, the Great Depression lasted, we started from around 1929, all through the 1930s. 1930s. Yeah. Of and uh, of course, they did a lot of things. The uh, President, uh, F.D. Roosevelt, brought what they call the New Deal, in which case he was New trying deal. to employ people uh, to do work and all that, just to give them some money and all that stuff. All that did not work, uh, per se, did not work, until in 1942. He, uh, you know, by then, in 1941, I think uh, January 7th, thereabouts, when the Pearl Harbor was bombed, the next day, uh, the American, uh, as a country, America, they went into the war, war. officially. Mm -hmm. And in a few uh, more months' time, he made a statement by which he banned the sale or purchase of any private vehicle in the whole of the United States between uh, April 1942 and December 1944. For two years, he banned the sale or purchase of any new vehicle in the USA. Uh, and, and he now commandeered the car manufacturer, General Motors and Co., to work with the Boeings of this world, with the Lockheed Martin, with, with, the, with the jets manufacturers, because they decided that they were going to produce 100,000 fighter jets in a year. And that was how they were able to, in fact, that was how they were able to produce those, those jets, sell some of them to the warring countries use some themselves. And however, they were able to gravitate America in unity in a certain direction. Even some of the, even household, housewives had roles to play in the emancipation and the, the, the coming out of the Great Depression of the United States. And that's what I keep talking about. That, that unity of purpose is what we don't have. He talks about the SUVs. I, I, I own one, so as you know how it feels. You know, but the point is that, you know, whether you're able to purchase it from your private salary or government salary is a different issue. Of course, it's alarming the amount of the number of SUVs on our streets these days, especially the ones purchased with, with the taxpayers' money for That's some big man or the other. In fact, it's even worse than we think. A lot of them are perhaps bulletproof. If you want to buy How a bulletproof SUV today, that's about 50 With a million, common world. minimum 50 million naira to purchase an SUV that's bulletproof. Because in the name of security. So how are we going to backtrack from where we are? Because we seem to be heading right inside the wilderness. Yeah. The budget will continue to grow Don't year on year. I'm, I'm, I'll take a few specifics of the 2013 projections. Uh, they intend to... I think uh, the gross revenue at about 10 trillion, up from about 9.6 last year. And then, however, they want to look at a scenario where you will have, uh, of course, they want to reduce deficit but to 1.7%, 1.78% from about 2.9 this year. This so year. they're trying to reduce the deficit. Uh, then you ask yourself, why can't we have a surplus? So how come that our expenditure is always still giving us a lot of pressure Okay, such that our revenue generated cannot meet up to it. Uh, you know, that we need the fundamental, they think. They are even thinking about what they call a zero-cost budgeting, uh, zero-based budgeting, budgeting, in which case uh, what we're looking at is a scenario where rather than say, okay, we spent X amount of money this year, and next year we're going to add just 10% to it. Okay? We want to find out the, 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 the makeup and the basis of this amount of money that we spent or that we're going to spend next okay, year. Okay, let, let me just halt it. Let's quickly take a break. And when we come back, the show continues. Please yeah. do stay with us. Yeah.